One of the greatest traditions of motocross near New Berlin, New York, where legends have been enhanced and careers began their climb, especially in the 125 ranks. The Super Six. Here are the past winners in the 125 division. Bradshaw, Cooper, Dobb, and Ryan Hughes. No Steve Lampson on that list yet. Lampson is taking nothing for granted despite, as you see, an 80-point lead in the championship race. Marty Reed is trackside. Guys, Unadillo is famous for a lot of things. One of them is the size of its rocks, sometimes as big as your fist, and when it hits you in the chest, it can literally knock the wind out of you. Now, you'll notice a lot of the plastic protectors on the outside, the guys wear those normally, but up underneath, you'll see a number of them wearing this very lightweight, but very, very protective chest protector underneath their jerseys. Also, a number of the riders are having hand grips mounted, protection right in front, so when they get on the bike, if they have one of those rocks pop up onto their hand, of their fingers. Thank you, Marty. Art Ekman and David Bailey now with you as Tim Ferry checking out the gate. It's tough to get your starting spot uh, dialed in the way you want. It's like watching a baseball player going to the batter's box. I mean, it's just flat ground. But they still sit there and kick it around and get it all the way they like it. That's what the riders are doing here. Typically, they want to make that level. They don't want to start in a rut and have to climb up over that starting gate. You can't go in front of the gate, though. Is that correct? That's correct. But if there's something out there, a big rock or a camera crew, for instance, drags the cord and pulls something in your way, you can ask it to be moved. So as the 125 riders do their gardening work, let's take a look at the Suzuki track map. This track has not changed much over the years, David Bailey. Now, one of the neatest things on this racetrack is the start. As soon as you take off, you drop down in the valley, and then you come back up before the first corner. As you can see from the layout, it's got everything. Long straightaways, sweepers, sharp corners, some of the steepest hills, and everything here is natural. The Frenchman, Mikel Pouchon, who's coming back from a wrist injury and also a chronic fatigue syndrome, which can be deadly as far as results are concerned in motocross. Especially here at Unadillo. There's a couple of racetracks on the circuit where you got to go there ready. Unadillo is definitely one of those. And I would say another track would be Southwick where it's so rough and sandy. Mike Kudrowski is game face on here, but he's more excited than ever. Just signing with Honda of Troy. Expected to be a teammate of Michael Craig who just re-signed for another year. That'll add a lot of professionalism to that Honda of Troy team for next season. Okay, we're almost set to go as they start the rev here in Moto 1 for the 125s at Unadilla. It's Michael Craig, number 17, John Dowd, Larry Brooks, Tim Ferry, but look who's got the whole shot. Number one, Steve Lampson. He's taking nothing for granted, David. Not at all, and he's got those hand protectors that Marty talked about on his handlebars, and uh, with a hole shot, he's probably not going to need them, as long as he can stay out there. <laughs> well, you notice he's wearing the plastic uh, chest protector on the outside. He's been one of the riders who has always, since he was a small youth, rode with a chest protector. He says it just feels natural. And right now, John Dowd is in hot pursuit of Michael Craig behind Steve Lampson. So it looks like the top four or five riders all have on those hand guards, anticipating the rocks coming up and being a problem. Remember, Mike Kudrowski broke his hand here in practice a few years ago, so they're all taking the precaution. Lammy also has a special protector in front of the pipe on that Honda machine. You need that. If you get the pipe squished in any way, you give up valuable horsepower. They try to drag all the horsepower they can out of these bikes. You see wide open through there. A lot of rocks, lamps, and dancing around. This place will get rougher during the moto. Look how hard packed it looks to start with, though, David. A lot harder than it's been in years past. That corner right there always had about a two-foot high or three-foot high big loamy berm with all the topsoil they used to have. But the amateurs get to this place first, and uh, a lot of that gets worn out before the pros ever see the track. Lampson with great acceleration in first place out of our camera range right now as Michael Craig's in second. And here number seven is John Dowd. He's second in the points to Lammy. He's had three second place finishes this year. One moto win at Southwick for number seven. Lampson working his way back to the front. This is the first big uphill where it used to get quite a bit rougher, but now they carry so much more speed into the hill from a new section that uh, it's not getting quite as rough as it has in the past. Another reason why I think it seems faster this year than ever before to me, David, is that there is no moisture, and uh, we've seen a lot of rain on this track in years past. And all that moisture makes it so tough to get down and up that steep hill right there on 125. When it's loamy right there, you have to downshift sometimes heading up that hill to keep the motor pulling, but this year they're getting a nice drive out of that corner. Steve Lampson already out to a four-second lead here at the end of the first lap. He is churning. 
it's always nice to glance over your shoulder and notice the distance getting larger. Helps you relax and get into your flow a lot quicker. Lampson in first. Michael Craig coming off a broken hand in second. We'll be back with more action in a moment. Coverage of AMA Motocross is being brought to you by the reigning Supercross 125 and 250 Outdoor Champions. Honda, come ride with us. Moto number one, 125, Steve Lampson, our leader. Here's John Dowd. Whoa, he hits a big rock. That berm right there is starting to get deep. It's got a little chuck hole, they call it, coming out of the end of it. And he was leaned in too far. It may have grabbed his fork leg and hopped the front wheel right out of the... Hey, what's that? A little <laughs> shortcut. I'm not sure if that was a shortcut or a better line. It That's looked like, like a, it was less rough. The great escape. Steve McQueen jumping the fence there. He jumped the <laughs> banners. That was pretty slick. He could have gotten him hung up in his back tire, but he didn't lose any time by going wide. So I don't think that'll be a problem for him. John Dowd in third place, followed by Team Suzuki's Tim Ferry, who's riding with a new aggressive style. Maybe he realizes he better do something before the end of the season is up. But Roger DeCosta almost given up on Tim Ferry. Look how steep that downhill is, too. Yeah, Ferry has been riding uh, a lot better lately. He sure looks good right now. Look at he maintain a lot more momentum around that burn by letting it drift wide. Starting to close the gap a little bit now on Dowd. Ferry coming off a second place finish at uh, Buchanan. Red butt, and we see the fifth place rider, Mike Brown, who's had his share of injuries this year. The pace to me, Art, looks really fast. I think the track is uh, its not as rough right now as it will be later on in the day. There's a look at Huffman. Our Suzuki stopwatch to get an idea as to the intervals now. As we go back to Chad Pedersen, number 21, and here's Kevin Windham, 13.4 seconds behind. Another slow first moto start for Windham. Yeah, there's Ali, his mechanic, looking on, wishing he'd have gotten a better start. It, it looks like he's got a pretty good pace going, and typically uh, he's been the fastest guy on the racetrack at times, a lot of times, in fact, but he keeps having to come from behind. He's kind of got the LaRocco thing going on in the 125 class. Buddy Antonez wraps around the tree, and there's Damon Huffman in seventh place. He's in the building process, David. He's working his way back to the front. I'm sure it won't take long before he gets there. Uh, coming through that mechanics area, one of the most off-camber corners on the whole entire circuit. Uh, slow speed, a good place to signal because you get time to look over and read that board. Antonez, a uh, great third place finish at Bud's Creek with a 3-4 effort. The starts really make the difference in the 125 class, and he got good starts there at Bud's Creek, and not too bad of a start today, battling with Brown right here. And typically, if you can get a top five, top ten start and ride really strong, not make any mistakes in the first few laps of the race, you really open it up and, and uh, put a lot of distance on the rest of the field. Interesting, the line selection here today, because a lot of riders take the same line simply because the rock's flying back. Right, and you can see it's starting to fly right there. And sometimes uh, there are tracks where you can follow a guy, actually, especially if the pace is pretty good. You can follow him, take the same lines uh, for quite a while. But Unadilla isn't one of the places you can do that because you got so much roost and so much rocks in that roost that you have to try to dodge. Steve Lampson, our leader here in the opening moto. One, two, fives from Unadilla. We take a look at Mike Brown being hounded by Buddy Antonez. An off-camber turn below the uphill move. Very hard to get momentum, but Antonez now is moving into fifth spot. Makes the pass on Mike Brown. And Brown blew that berm at the bottom of the hill. Lost all his momentum on the 125. That's, that's going to kill you. You come into that corner, and you're, you're just saying, okay, now get through the corner fast. You're so over-anxious at times, you'll make that mistake. He went over the berm a little bit. That opened the door for Buddy. Buddy Antonez was in the great position to take advantage of that move by Mike Brown. This is one of the only one-line sections on the racetrack, and actually it's got two berms through it this year, so uh, the drier conditions have really, I think, made for better racing. A mechanical now for James Dobb as you see him here coming off a moto win in the last race at Buchanan. Let's go to Marty Reed and see what this problem is now. Well, you can see the end result of what has happened to James Dobb. He has lost the chain and obviously out of this moto. Let's see if we can swing on over here. James. What happened? I just landed over here a bit heavy and uh, I think a rock must have got between my uh, sprocket and the, the chain and it just snapped the chain. So the rock has taken its first victim and unfortunately it's been you. Yeah, but hopefully I'll go back, get all ready and hopefully come out and try and win the second motor. 
So James Dobb, the first victim of the rocky road here at Unadilla. Mike Brown in sixth place, but he's got Damon Huffman on his tail. So Brown, trying to avoid going backward, now has the talented Damon Huffman. That's a bummer, too, when you're riding pretty good, but not just not quite good enough. And what happens is everyone keeps catching up to you, and you find yourself having to ride defensive all day long, and you're never really able to get any kind of forward momentum going. Huffman out for five national events. He makes the pass on Mike Brown into sixth place. Damon Huffman coming off that uh, could have been a devastating injury to the ACL. It was shredded. It was not blown. And Dr. Stebner went in just to simply stimulate the healing rather than do much uh, mending process. But it's good to see Damon back and getting stronger with each race. Here with the 125s, the first moto with Steve Lampson way out in front. Michael Craig holding strong, looking to tie his best finish of the year. We'll be back. Grandma, do you remember your first date with Grandpa? Oh my, yes. I was late, and we missed the first half hour of the Philadelphia story. Nice one, Grandma. <laughs> At Continental Cablevision, we're developing the technology that will enable you to find the movie you want. From new releases, ladies, join me in the dance, to old classics. John, you remembered. Oh, you remembered that, too. Grandma. <laughs> Turn it on, catch the beat, play the game, feel the heat. We've got great Montgomery Ward is where you want to be, guaranteed. For our 150% low price guarantee on select items throughout Rooms and More and Electric Avenue. Like this Toshiba 27-inch stereo color TV, just $3.99. We've got great brands at a great price. And Montgomery Ward. <laughs> if statements like these are true. Mr. Gullible. ESPN News Network, the 24-hour sports news network from ESPN. Who else? Welcome back to Unadilla, Art Ekman, David Bailey, and Marty Reed as we take a look at 125 action. That's one of the news sections, Art. They took out one of those hairpin turns and just put a straightaway into like a plateau with what it turned out to be right there. And Wyndham's got a faster line through there than everyone else. Kevin Wyndham, riding Unadilla for the first time, has to come back from that mid-pack start, and he's doing it in grand style. He's taking on Mike Brown and Damon Huffman. Oh, he almost took a very difficult line off the track. Here he's battling with Mike Brown as they go up the hill. He's got good power, passes Brown. Next in his sights, number 10, Damon Huffman on the Kawasaki. And Brown did a pretty good job of trying to keep Wyndham from getting around him up that hill. He just moved over little by little, and Wyndham had the room to keep going. The track here is so wide, Wyndham using it all. Boy, and he's not letting off that throttle at all as he gets by Huffman. Wyndham has passed 14 riders in five laps. And look at his riding right there. His foot just skimming the ground, his outside elbows up, using the clutch, pulling away from these guys he just passed. When he's on... He's beautiful to watch. And you can tell right here, this is more of a stand-up track as he sits down for the turns. Well, he and Huffman both stand up quite a bit with the when they ride. I think maybe they're a little taller and uh, not sure if it's just their height, really, or if that's just the way they like to ride. Ron Lachine did the same thing. You can see Ronnie stand up through corners, and uh, Marty Tripe's one of the first guys to ever do that technique, and I, I don't know if it was just... When Marty did it, it kind of looked like he was just being lazy, but he sure went fast. <laughs> Mike Brown now starting to hound Damon Huffman wants that position back again to look at number 21. That's Chad Pedersen. He's on the move behind Mike Brown. Every time Brown thinks he's gotten it over with and he doesn't have anybody coming from behind, he can relax and try to get into a flow. He's got somebody else coming up from behind. It's a pretty interesting line he had there too, squaring off that corner, having to go way wide, but I think it pays off in the end. Lampson's still our leader. In fact, he's way out in front in double digits as we see Mike Brown trying to hold his position with Huffman in front of him and Chad Pedersen in back. Number 10, Damon Huffman, really showing what he's made of this year, coming back from a devastating Supercross injury. It's good to see him back in it. I'm sure he'll be ready for next year, which is probably all this year is about, really get back into it and get some confidence. 
and uh, looks like everyone's kind of taking the same lines. There, Pedersen's going a little bit wider, I think maybe like just to dodge that roost, but the only guy I can see right now that looks like he's taking different lines and they're working for him is Wyndham, and it's, uh, I think it's obvious because he caught all these guys and passed them, and now he's already pulled away, dropped down the hill before our camera can catch up with him. Pedersen coming off a sixth place finish at Redbud, but certainly like to take on the two in front of him to get a better placement here today. Michael Craig still in second place as Lampson is taken away with it. John Dowd, though, makes the inside move on. Oh, they contact, and Michael Craig kisses the dirt a little bit. That was pretty aggressive by Dowd. He got in there, and their lines came together. I think Dowd drifted out there just to make sure. There's another look. Watch Dowd. He's got the inside berm. All that momentum carries him wide. I think Craig uh, probably didn't expect Dowd to get that aggressive, and... If he'd have known that, I'm sure he would have backed out of a little bit and tried to stay out there. You see Dow looking back. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> That's <laughs> motocross. Steve Lamps and John Dow moving into second place with Tim Ferry in third, and Michael Craig picking up and getting back on the track in fourth. You can see it's still a pretty good gap back to that battle that uh, may be catching him. If he can get reestablished in his pace after that little uh, tip over, he'll be okay because he's got enough of a cushion. Dowd not unknown for putting uh, people down as we saw him do a job on Ezra Lusk. Where was that, David? At Mount Morris, I think. Right. They came through an off-camber corner. Kind of the same deal, only that time it was a right-hand corner, and he just kept drifting wide, drifting wider, and uh, Lusk hit the deck. And yeah, It was one of those deals where it wasn't on purpose, just Dowd's aggressive, and if he's got the line, he's going to take it away from you. The Lady Luck usually evens things up in this game. Let's go to Marty Reed, who's with another victim of this Unadilla track. Marty? Well, we've got our second victim. You can see Paul Curry. He has hey, taken a rock right underneath his left eye and has been forced to pull off the race course, and that's going to turn into a pretty big shiner. Oh, Marty, it looks like he just got out of the boxing ring. Looks like he got tangled with Oscar De La Hoya or something. He, you know, if he had his goggles on, I can't imagine a rock coming in and hitting him and making that happen, but uh, I could see it with his goggles were off. I can't understand why he would have them off at that point, though. A big battle right now for second place. It's Ferry on the team Suzuki, number 20, passing John Dowd, and he's got second place out of this corner. What a nice move, and he saw how hard he had to get on the brakes and make that corner. Out horsepowered him, and picked a little bit better line down that right-hand sweeper, and then coming into that sharp left, both brakes locked up, so Ferry's aggressive right now and moving forward. Well, we always knew he had the talent. He had great technique in his riding skills. But Tim Ferry now has added an aggressive type action to his riding, which has made uh, all the difference in the world. Well, I really love to watch him ride. There's the mechanics area again. Dow with a little bit different line trying to square that corner off. Ferry's beautiful to watch when he's on. It's just a matter of uh, staying on often enough. Lampson still our leader, but Ferry's moved in a second. What do you see in this blood, hmm? Interesting. And this one? I see. And? <laughs> and finally? Hmm? Oops. <laughs> My mistake. Suzuki Dual Sport Motorcycles. Four personalities, one great line. Oh, I see. Chaparral, the world's largest parts and accessories, motorcycle, ATV, and watercraft dealer. Call today. Chaparral, we race what we sell. A few things you should know about arena football. The field is a little too small. The hitting, a little too severe. And the scoring is totally out of control. It's like putting a football in a blender. This summer, step into the arena. Arena football on ESPN2. Art Ekman, David Bailey, Marty Reed from Unadilla, very impressed at the speeds that uh, these 125s are making it here in moto number one. And you see part of that uh, 
chest protector shoulder guard has come loose on Lampson. Because he's coming, he looks like the hunchback right there. It, I guess it's the shoulder piece just came unstrapped, and that's got to be bugging him just a little bit. Well, and two, he's got to be wondering, hey, will this shift around on my body any if uh, it gets any contact? But he's so far out in front right now, that's the least of his worries. And uh, right now, Marty Reed's making his way over to the mechanics area, and uh, he's with Steve Lampson's mechanic. Let's get the inside. Goose, we noticed that that shoulder pad on his left shoulder's come undone. It's okay as long as he's got the lever. What happens when he gets into lap traffic? I don't know. I hope it doesn't get in the way. I just hope it doesn't hinder his movement in any way, you know? That's I'm, my concern. I was thinking more about maybe getting a rock up in there. Yeah, that's not good either. Either way, it's not good. You got to hope and pray he doesn't lap anybody then, right? Uh, no, we're not hoping that. We're hoping he does lap people. <laughs> With an 18-second lead here with the final lap, Steve Lampson is looking forward to trying for his first Unadilla overall victory in his career, which is uh, amazing, really. He's had so many races here on the 125s, and of course, winning the championship last year. Well, he's off to a good start. Look at him jumping about third of the way down this downhill. Still able to get stopped for that inside berm, using the clutch a lot, get that thing pulling up the hill. Steve Lampson looking for his ninth moto win in 15 motos. Marty Reed talked with him earlier. Was it one of those uh, places that you dreamed about as a young lad, uh, you know, being able to race where the champions all raced? Yeah, I always, uh, you always hear Unadilla, and uh, when I was younger, that's the, that was the track, you know, and uh, now I'm here racing, you know, last few years, and it's just, it's great to be here. It's one of the best, it is one of the best tracks on the circuit. Is there anybody that can beat you today? Um, I mean, I would hope not, but I know that there's uh, John Dowd and Kevin Windham, and, you know, there's a lot of guys out there going fast, and especially Dowd, I think this is uh, one of his home tracks, so it's going to be, it's not going to be easy, I know that. I'm going to go out there and uh, just put my head down and uh, not count anybody out. Well, it's not too difficult if you race a perfect race, David Bailey, like he has. The way he's been riding, it's no wonder he's got the big lead that he's got. But the uh, only thing I can think that went wrong was his shoulder pad came undone. Probably didn't do a whole lot for the aerodynamics, <laughs> although that's not something that motocrosses really pay attention to. As Lampson heads to the finish line, the only battle left in this race is Antonez, Pedersen, and Brown for 6th, 7th, and 8th. Here's Lammy trying to finish things up. Oh, the bike looks in great shape. Doesn't even look like it's been in a race as he takes the checkered flag. Moto win number 9. Here's the finish for that uh, six, seven, and eighth positions that we were noting. Antonez, number 22, in front of Chad Pedersen now. Antonez played it smart, coming down the inside, protecting it, and saw what happened earlier between Dowd and Craig. So Steve Lapson goes another win in the record books in his dominating fashion this year at one two fives. Tim Ferry, his second, second place finish in a row. John Dowd, third, Wyndham and Craig rounding out the top five. Let's go to Marty Reed, who's with our Moto number one winner. Obviously, the race was no sweat, no strain. You don't even have a fleck of mud on your face. It was a smooth ride. Yeah, it was. I mean, I got a good start, and that's, uh, shoot, that helped a lot. And uh, I just rode, rode smooth and rode hard and uh, just kept a good pace up and uh, tried to not make any mistakes. How worried were you about the shoulder pad? Because I talked to Goose about it. He was concerned, and I was, because I, I, I was worried you might get hit with a rock. I wasn't too worried about that. I was just worried about maybe if uh, something happened to the other side, then I'd uh, have the thing all over my body. So, uh, But it didn't bother me at all. I just kept my head down and uh, rode hard. No rocks hit you? Uh, no, I, luckily I uh, I was out of the roost, you know, winning, so I uh, didn't get very dirty and saved a lot of energy, too. But even in the lap traffic, it, uh, no, nobody kicked anything up? No, nah, it wasn't too bad. Everyone, I got around everyone pretty clean, and uh, nobody really, you know, really tried to stay ahead of me. See you in the second motor. All right, thank you very much. All of a sudden, Tim Ferry, number 20, has gotten serious about this sport as he takes second in the first moto here at Unadilla. Let's go back to Marty. Well, second place, picked up uh, where you left off. I mean, uh, another good, strong ride in a moto. Yeah, it was. You know, at the beginning there, uh, that was riding pretty good. But uh, I knew I was as fast, if not faster. So I figured I'd hang behind him for a little while and uh, he make my plan. And uh, he knocked one guy down, so that was easier for me. All right, I guess the big question is, do you have anything left for Lampson? Because he just ran away in this first one. Uh, I didn't that moto, but... Um, Hopefully in the second motor I'll come out in second or first and he'll be in second or whatever. And uh, we'll see, you know, if he, uh, he's riding good today and uh, obviously he, he won by a pretty good margin, but uh, I'll try to get my Suzuki out from this podium again. 
Can Ferry become only the third rider to win an overall this year? We'll find out when we come back. The crews, of course, very busy between 125 motos as we go into the pit area. The Eastern 125 Supercross champion, Mikel Pashon, has had his problems uh, in the outdoors. Let's get an update with Marty. First off, you know, all season long, we've talked about your know, physical fitness and how at times you just felt like you didn't have enough energy. And, and all of a sudden now you just told me that, that you now have a real problem that, that is the reason behind all this. Yeah, I got a um, chronic fatigue syndrome. It's uh, something that a couple of riders had um, in the past. So we, we find that um, two months, uh, I mean, one, one month ago. But uh, for the moment, it just got me tired. So kind of track like today, it's going to be very hard. But some track like Troy, where it's uh, more jumps, you know, you, uh, you can rest a little bit more. That'd be okay. But uh, for the moment, I don't know. Now, you already mentioned this is going to be a very demanding track uh, with this situation. How tough is it going to be out there? Very tough. The first moto would be, I think, pretty okay. But second moto would be very hard because with that, with that virus, I come very... Um, recover very, very fast. I need a, a long time. So between motors, only one hour between motors, it's pretty short. So all the time, the second motor, it's more, it's more harder. But we say, I think, um, I hope to, to do the best. The rock damage on the pipe in the first moto. <laughs> you can count on wasting a couple of exhaust pipes here in a deal, unless you have a pipe guard. Team Chaparral like to go with brand new pipes for the second moto. After moto number one of the 125s, it was obvious, David, that Kevin Windham had the fastest bike on the track, uh, but he got the slow start. Wouldn't it be something if he got a better start against Steve Lampson? It'd be something. I've been waiting for this battle to unfold all year long. They definitely are the fastest guys in this class when they're on. Uh, Windham is on today. Too bad he didn't get the start he needed. And he's definitely got the speed to run with Lampson. Windham and Lampson have both signed contracts for next year, but there's some riders out there that haven't signed yet. Uh, salary drive time for Tim Ferry? Well, you know, contracts can be really distracting, but it's obvious for Ferry, who's been riding well the past few weeks, certainly good in the first moto, that it's a motivating factor. And uh, for me, I hated it. I didn't. I wanted to get it over with, get it signed in March. And the longer it went through the year, the more motivation it gave me to get the job done. The one two fives are at the starting gate. Let's go there now. As we get ready for 125 action, one of the things that's really interesting is the choice of starting position. Steve Lampson is about a dozen gates from the post position, but come all the way over to the pole, far inside, and there you see second place finisher, Tim Ferry. Ferry obviously thinks that the straight line to turn number one is the advantage. We're gonna find out. Well, Ferry's got the straightest and uh, probably the shortest line to the first corner, but it's a lot sharper turn when he gets there. Typically, the hole shots come from just inside of the middle, but if Ferry gets there first, uh, he'll have the advantage. Casey Johnson having all kinds of problems there at the starting gate, having to pull off the gate. He can't get it started. And that's no good either. When you're a rider and you're trying to think about the race, and I remember I once on a 500, I could get my bike started. Finally, Roger DeCoster, who was a master of starting a 500, brought my bike to the line running just in time. Johnson was kind of bummed when my bike shut up, to tell you the truth, because we were both going for the title at the time. Let's go to Marty. We've got trouble at the starting gate. 58, Casey Johnson cannot get his bike to fire. They're trying to push it. Now they finally have got it started. He's pulling into position. But now he's just had to do about a 50-yard sprint to help get his bike going. Casey Johnson finishing in 36th in the first moto. Having his problems today now. Whoa, they got a little false start there at the beginning. They were lucky they didn't hung up. Kevin Windham, though, with a great hole shot start here with the second moto. That's Kevin out in front. Drifts all the way out to the banners. You can see they've taken the disc out there and churned up the racetrack. So that's all smooth. They're running through there wide open. But Windham right now, clear sailing. A lot different from the first moto. And the Suzuki number 390 is David Kratz in second place from Southerton, Pennsylvania. Great start for him. I remember that. Some of the first big races I ever got into, I accidentally got a good start. I'm like, oh no, what do I do now? Windham out in front, and there's Lampson on the left side of your screen. He's about seventh right now. Yeah, he was tossed right in there with Ferry, and it looked like Damon Huffman. So all those guys pretty far off the pace. Those are the guys that I would expect to get up there and challenge Windham, and they got a little work cut out before they even get up to see and take a look at him. Windham coming around the mechanics area now. 
Jeez, look at the lead he's already got. Michelle worked into second, but already about 25, 30 yards back. Mike Brown, Buddy Antonez, number 22. And then Kratz, still holding in the top five. Oh, Michael Brandis goes for a ride. Unscheduled, of course. Almost took Ferry down with him. Ferry had to go way wide to avoid him. He put some water down on the racetrack right now, and Wyndham got through there quick, but that's going to get everyone muddy. When Lampson came by in that previous shot, his front number plate was covered with mud. Kevin Wyndham is just taking away with it, very similar to what Lammy did in the first moto. Now, even more impressive, I think. Brandis just getting going. Probably some stuff is bent. Yeah, he's going to go and straighten the front end out. Way off the pace now. That's the worst feeling in the world when you're dead last and you got four or five laps to go before you even catch up with the back markers. And, you know, the, the thought of even getting a point and getting 20th, it seems like a impossible task, but you still got to do the job. Wyndham, our leader, Pichon, and Mike Brown, number nine. Brown has had a good day here at Unadilla. He's a tough rider who usually shows his strength toward the end of a race, but he's gotten good starts today. He's going to need them, too. Look at how much water they put on the racetrack. Now they have to because they got to keep the dust down, especially in these main spectator areas, but really makes it a mess that first lap, especially if you don't get a good start. Brown getting by Pichon into second place. But a year and a half away from our leader, Kevin Windham. Yeah, he's already gone. These guys in a pretty good little battle. Brown, a little different from the first moto where he was getting passed by everybody. Now he's doing the passing, so... Apparently got things worked out between motos, maybe made a few corrections to the bike and renewed enthusiasm. Boy, for Pershon to have a chronic fatigue syndrome, that'd be like an uh, Olympic diver having vertigo. Kevin Windham, Mike Brown, Pershon the top three as we go to moto number two here at Unadilla for the one 2 fives. We'll be back with more action in a moment. Welcome back to the Indadilla Valley Sports Center near New Berlin, New York. Art Eklund, David Bailey, Marty Reed bringing you the 125 action out of Moto2. After Steve Lampson ran away with Moto number one, it is Kevin Windham running away with Moto number two and Lammy having to fight his way up through the pack. Right now, Mike Brown in second place, number nine, Honda of Troy Rider. After passing Mikel Pachon, who's now in third. The Frenchman out of Le Mans, France. Coming into that new section again, this used to be like a little uh, switchback section. Now they just run straight. You can see over the top of that plateau all the way into this big uphill. They carry a lot more speed into it. Watch, they don't even let off. Wide open all the way up the hill. It used to get a lot rougher. Today it's wide open. You don't get any rest either, do you? Because you don't get that much air time on this track. Now, like Pichon said earlier, he's talked about Troy having so many more jumps, and, and it does. A lot more man-made stuff. Practically all of it's man-made, and you get to rest when you're up in the air like that. Here, you just bump after bump. Now with water on the racetrack and the places that were smooth, and you could rest. You got to fight the slick. Equal distance between second, third, and fourth, and guess who's in fourth? And he is on the come, having a little trouble there with the berm on the on the tight turn. He tried to cut it with Steve Lampson, but he didn't lose any time on Pichon. He's got a long ways to go to catch up to Wyndham. He probably can't even see him. But if he finishes up in second here, that wouldn't be too bad of a day, and he'd still pick up the overall. So I think it's first things first. Get into second, see where uh, Wyndham is, and then decide if it's worth making that kind of a push. Remember, he went down here a couple years ago pretty hard. Right in this gravity cavity. He was leading in points at the time. Had a pretty good lead, in fact. And then uh, his teammate, Doug Henry, ended up winning the championship that year after that crash. Back-to-back -back titles for Henry, then he moved up to the 250s. I wonder what would happen with Lampson uh, if he wins the title again this year, where he's going to go. be interesting to see what Honda decides to do. Corkscrewing around the trees now, Mikel Pichon in third, following Mike Brown. And Kevin Windham, oh, there goes Pichon. That's a tough section right there because you come over that little plateau there and it's real hard and slick, and some of those rocks get brought up on the inside. There's, an, there's a different angle. Front end is just going to wash out. So he's just short of the berm. He tried to hit the beginning of that berm and square out of it, but he needed to stay in it just a little bit longer. Once he cut out and got onto that flat, slick surface, the front end just went away. Lampson not on the brakes now, but he had to put on the brakes pretty quick not to run over Mikel Pichon. So it's Lammy now in third spot behind Mike Brown. Now it's a factory Honda versus a Honda of Troy, souped up production. 
I think Lamson's going to have a little bit of an advantage. He's definitely got a lot more confidence. Rightly so. If I'd won that many motos, I'd be pretty confident, too. <laughs> Totally different from last year when Lampson, of course, the injury and had to fight back from a 60-point deficit to take the championship in the final moto. Nice, easy, clean pass of Mike Brown by Steve Lampson. I'm Mike Brown right here. I'm going to hitch a ride, learn everything I can, copy some of those lines, try to dodge the rocks, but learn as much as I can. Try to keep everybody off my tail. It, it, the best... Uh, or at the worst, really, if he can stay where he's at, he's going to get third, and that's going to improve on his first moto. Well, Steve Lampson in good position for the overall once again. As Kevin Windham, though, had an eight-second lead after the first lap, and he's continued to extend that. So I don't know if Lampson has enough time on this track unless Windham should make a mistake. Well, you never count Lampson out. The guy never gives up. And he's been the one that's dominated this class, so anything can happen. Wow. Ooh, Buddy, Buddy Antonez, yes. Good save right there. That could happen to Wyndham, too. All he's got to do is go down, lose his rhythm, bend a lever, and Lampson's right back in the picture. Well, that's a good example of how slick this track has become with very little topsoil like in years past. Damon Huffman now up to seventh place, trying to work himself back into shape. Huffman in the first moto was in ninth. Nice pass there right there by John Dowd coming down to the inside and taking advantage of that corner where Pichon went down a little earlier, just took away the inside line. Dowd's getting good at that. <laughs> See if he can do it to Huffman. Makes a nice cut turn right there. Working their way through one of the rougher sections on the racetrack. You see because of the, the water and that off camber and it's choppy through that, it's become a pretty technical section as they try to get a run up that right-hander Kind of sweeping uphill. A lot of guys have gone down there in the past. Remember a year Hannah went down there so bad. He got up and twirled all around, didn't even know where he was. Couldn't find the motorcycle either. Was laying <laughs> over in the deep grass. Mikel Pichon trying to battle back after being as high as second place and then lost the front end. I've never seen these guys get such a good run at that uphill. Usually you've got a... There'll be riders sitting all around the bottom of that hill in practice, trying to figure out the best way up it. That's a wild off-camber right there. The first time I ever came here to Unadil and saw how steep that downhill was, I kind of thought it was a joke. I thought you'd just have to go down with the brakes locked up and still miss the corner. And at the bottom, you don't get much room, and then it goes back down into the woods. Here comes John Dow to the inside, the passing of Damon Huffman. That Just line's... barely caught that outside berm, David. <laughs> he didn't catch much of it, but he was determined to stay on the racetrack. Looked over to make sure he had that clean pass. Same place he got Craig in the first moto, but at least Huffman didn't go down in the process. So John Dowd once again coming from behind to show a lot of power here through the mid-race section. Kevin Windham incidentally has a 16-second lead here in Moto2 over Steve Lampson in second place. If Lammy just holds on to second, he's got the overall victory. What a contrast to John Dowd, who's covered with mud, having to come from a little further back. Kevin looks like uh, this is his first lap out there. He hasn't even got a speck of dirt on him, and everything's coming together good. He's got a huge lead right now, and he's in that flow. When he's in that zone, he's untouchable. Well, it's interesting. He gained a lot of experience with his first moto. That was the first time he's seen the Unadilla track. Let's go down to Marty. Oh, what a difference a great start will make. Yeah, it's, he's got a good start, and the track is a little muddy, and he got out, and everybody else is fighting in the mud, so he just took off and went pretty fast. He also looks like he's pressing this first 10 minutes, but now Lampson's in second place. Does he have enough to hold him off? Uh, I'm sure he does. He's working really hard, so he's, got, he's in shape. In shape indeed, and way out in front, Kevin Windham making a mockery of the rest of the field here at Unadillo. He could not be in shape, and... The way he's riding, uh, still put on this kind of a performance because he doesn't use any energy. He's wheeling over all the big holes. He's sitting down at the right places. He stands up, as he pointed out a little earlier, Art. He stands up a lot more than most of the other guys and saves a lot of energy out there and still goes fast. Look at the lead. The Suzuki stopwatch ticking off the seconds. Wyndham over Steve Lampson. 16.5 now on the half lap. Number 34, you see Yogi, his nickname. That's Ezra Lusk with problems. He had a second and a third in the last two events overall, moving into the top five in points. Having his troubles here at Unadilla. This is that technical section I talked about earlier where Hannah had gone down, and 
You can see back behind him, that's a big whoop de doo That's a hole. I would be, I would assume that he landed in that sideways, trying to carry his speed to that corner, and the bike is swapped out. Our Suzuki Field summary, Kevin Windham way out in front of Steve Lampson looking for the overall. Mike Brown will have a battle with Buddy Antonez when we get back. Back to the old and very traditional Unadilla Valley Sports Center in New Berlin, New York. Pichon trying to save some energy, running in ninth. Remember, he was in second at the very beginning of the race. So he's dropped back considerably, and he said this track would be tough for him, and it's starting to show right now. That chronic fatigue syndrome is it's impossible for him to recover between motos and have a lot of energy in the second moto. That's really sad, too, after such an outstanding Supercross season, winning the Eastern 125 Championship and looking with so much promise. Another rider with a lot of promise who's had injury problems is right behind Pichon, number 14 there on the Primal Honda. Robbie Raynard is coming back, his first race since separating his shoulder. Yeah, kind of a neat line, too, as they dropped into that back section. He used one of the braking bumps to jump over the crest of the hill, land going down in. Stands up a little bit more than some of the other riders, too. I think towards the later stages of a moto, when guys are getting tired, that's usually a sign. You'll see him start standing up a little bit more and searching for better lines, trying to hop over all the bumps. And Raynard's doing that now, which is understandable because he had that injury and wasn't able to train. So he's coming in here not tip-top in terms of his physical condition. So both he and Pichon are riding around uh, just trying to save their energy. They're both wounded. Buddy Antonez, Tim Ferry, and then John Dow. That's a good threesome for a battle coming up here on the Unadilla track. Dow doing the same thing that uh, Rayner did, jumping over the crest of that hill. Makes the pass, it looks like. Sure did. Made the pass on Tim Ferry. Nice move. He just set it all up by having a nice line going to that corner towards the back section. Positioned himself to the inside. and. Uh, completely different style for Dowd compared to Pichon and Rayner who are just trying to save their energy and get through this moto. Dowd is strong. He's 100% and he's going to get tougher as the moto continues. It looks like he's not finished yet. Uh-oh, Chad Pedersen is down. Chad having a pretty good afternoon of it. The pro circuit rider does not look like he's in good shape. He went over the handlebars is our report. Buddy Antonez in fourth place and John Dowd right behind him. This is the battle right now as Kevin Windham is way out in front. Our leader, Steve Lampson, a lonely second place. This is the battle. If it weren't for a couple of bad starts, John Dowd would be contending for the title right now. Coming from behind to take a third in the first moto. He's in fifth right now with his sights on Buddy Antonez. Antonez with a couple of good starts and then fades a little bit as the moto goes on. Antonez in the first moto taking a sixth place finish. You can see from this camera angle how beautiful this place is. Why they call it Unadilla Valley. The crowd a little more mellow this year than it's been in the past. This place is known for the wild spectators. The hill people they call them. Good pass. Dowd and Antonez fighting it out. Antonez cannot hold on to the position. And John Dowd has moved up a notch. He keeps making passes on that inside. He's got two places on the racetrack where I notice he keeps making his passes, both on the inside. Catches the guy by surprise, runs it in a little deeper. By the time the guy gets into the corner, Dowd's already in the way. He has to just give it up. David, earlier you were mentioning about the beauty of this area. It's one of my favorite rides from a city airport to a track is this very position where you go through some of the most beautiful farmland in upstate New York. Uh, Chad Pedersen now. They've got him sitting up. He's with the uh, medical personnel. He landed so far in front of his bike, he really had a rocket off that thing. All right, David, Marty. <laughs> want to go to a party later? Well, yeah, just after I said the spectators at Mellow, <laughs> they want to party with us, Art. I don't know. Wyndham way out in front. Lamps in the lonely second with Brown down and Antonez. The top five. We'll be back with a race to the checkers in a moment. Welcome back to Unadilla, moto number two of the 125s. Our winner of the first moto, Steve Lampson, currently in second place, but he's 20 seconds behind the leader. That says a lot for Wyndham. I mean, maybe Lampson's taking it easy, but Wyndham's pulling away from the most dominant guy in the series. Let's go down trackside to Marty. Goose, it seems like the lead stays about 19, 20 seconds. Are you sort of telling him just to stay there because he wins the overall with a second place finish? Yeah, he's doing it real good, consistent lap times. You know, the, the leader, if you get the good start, you're gone. You get those first clean laps and you're away. And for him to try to make that up, he doesn't need to. So I just wanted to let him know that he's doing a good job where he's at. 
pretty good job. 80-point lead coming into the race in the title chase, David. We figure if he got an 80-point lead, he can stay home and go to the next race with a 30-point lead if Dowd wins both motos. So it's a nice place to be. On the team manager, Wes McCoy, said, do you know how many points you're ahead? He said, I don't want to know. <laughs> well, last year at this point, he was like 80 points behind still or something. I mean, he had so much to make up. And this year, it's the complete opposite. And he has the luxury of being able to take it a little easy at times. Same way Jeremy can do in a 250 class. Kevin Windham last year, of course, as you see him going down into the gravity cavity. Wow, that could have been pretty costly. That's where Lanson went down a couple years ago. Just jumped down a little bit too far to the outside in that powdery stuff, and the, the G forced out in there, and he was so far forward, he almost tucked the front end under. Kevin Windham with injuries and mono last year. Hasn't seen a lot of these tracks. In fact, this is the first day he's raced at Unadilla. Earlier, Marty talked with him. I found out just prior to doing this, I didn't realize this is your very first time running at Unadilla. Yeah, first time of, you know, just always as a kid, grew up uh, watching it. And uh, last year, you know, first year uh, on the outdoor series, you know, I wound up getting hurt and having a uh, mono during this race. And uh, this was one of the ones I missed out on. So this is the first time. Does this hold special significance for you as a kid growing up like so many other runners? Yeah, you know, I've always looked at the track and, you know, just as a kid, you know, I always wanted to ride the track. You know, it looks so good on, on TV and, uh, you know, all the tracks do it. And this is one of the first times that I've actually, you know, got to ride it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's always been in the back of my mind that I wanted to. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that I'm getting the opportunity. A little further back on the track there as he's coming down the straightaway, you saw him look over to his left. He's looking at Lamson, who was coming the other way. That's Wyndham's girlfriend standing on top of the Yamaha Semi. It's hard to spectate this racetrack uh, for the mechanics. And the heel clicker with Kevin Wyndham so far out in front. Of course, Wyndham taking his first overall victories at Glen Helen and Mount Morris. The only rider besides Steve Lampson to win an overall this year. The checkers for Kevin Wyndham. Oh, good comeback effort for Kevin after a difficult first moto. Kevin Windham, Steve Lamps in the second place. Mike Brown all the way to third. John Dowd and Tim Ferry are top five. Antonez holding on to sixth place. Robbie Rayner getting into the top ten. Let's go down to Marty, who's with Kevin. We talked with Ali, and, he, and we talked about the fact what a difference a start makes, but you really exploded. Yeah, you know, I've been so happy with my riding. You know, I just been a little down about the start, and uh, you know, I've trying, been trying to concentrate as hard as I could. You know, maybe I was concentrating a little hard, too hard, but I got it done that time, and uh, man, it just felt great to get out there and you know, not have any dirt in your face that time. Now, I think one of our cameras caught you with about four minutes to go with a little bit of bobble. Did you did you scare yourself there for a minute? Yeah, I was hoping y'all didn't see that. Uh, that scared me pretty bad. Uh, but uh, I, was, I landed in a little bit of powder. I got a little bit sloppy up on top of the hill, but. Uh, you know, luckily I recovered and uh, rode smooth from there on out. Congratulations, great ride. Thanks a lot. Kevin Windham notching his third moto win of the season as you see the overall results. Lamps and Windham and Dowd making the podium. Ferry just off the podium with a good two and five run. Mike Brown looking stronger as the season goes along. Marty Reed is with our overall winner. Well, you didn't get the start that you won in the second moto, but you drove a very smart race. Yeah, I did, and that's uh, my whole goal is just to be smart. And uh, I definitely want to win the motos that I can, you know, but uh, unfortunately I didn't get a good start, and Kevin got out there, and uh, we I couldn't make up no time on him, and so I just decided to, you know, play it safe and don't do nothing stupid. You like this place a little better now? Yeah, this is my first win here, so that's great for me. And uh, I'm just happy, you know, happy to win. And, uh, you know, I got to say my Honda worked great, my mechanic Mike Gosser and uh, Cliff White all of them did a great job today. We'll see you next round, Troy. Yep, thanks a lot. Lampson with the 1-2 today, captured his sixth overall in eight races. As we take a look at the Suzuki point standings, he increased his points lead to 89 points. At this rate, David, he could clinch the title at Washougal. Although it looks like Lampson won't be touched for the title, uh, the way Wyndham is ridden today, we could see some real battles develop between these two as the season closes, and perhaps if Wyndham keeps riding like that, he could take over second from his teammate. Back with the big guys, the 250s, in a moment. Nestled in the beautiful hilly farmlands of upstate New York, Unadilla Valley Sports Center has been the site where all of the sport's greatest stars have applied their trade. Once a year, a tranquil, peaceful hillside 
is transformed into motocross's most natural, vibrant battlefield. Dominated by the Europeans in the early 70s, Roger DeCoster emerged as the first god of Unadilla. Roger's last win here was an epic battle with Bob Hurricane Hanna, the next in a short line of crowd favorites. Then there was the track's winningest rider, Ricky Johnson. No matter what your moniker, though, the Unadilla curse has proved indiscriminate. Welcome, everyone, to the eighth round of the AMA 250 Motocross Series. We scan the pits before our opening moto from Unadilla, New York. I had my goatee for a long time, and it's been a long time since I've shaved that thing, so I uh, figured I'd just try something new. Just wanted to see what your upper lip looked like again. Yeah, I forgot. It's been a while. <laughs> This guy's not watching Moto World. <laughs> All right. We're going to break some news to you here. <laughs> Kudrowski's coming back. Yeah, I guess, yeah, that's what I hear. Uh... <laughs> it's just another guy on the track. Playful but very competitive former teammates went with Kawasaki, Mike Larocco, and Mike Kudrowski. Kudrowski siding with Honda of Troy for next year as our riders getting ready now at the starting gate. Let's go down to Marty. This first moto is going to be very interesting. We've got a matchup that we've been looking for, the number one and the number two. Jeremy McGrath and Jeff Emig are going to line up side by side. Of course, starts are always pivotal, but also momentum is pivotal. And Emig is coming off a very big win last time out at Red Bud at Buchanan, Michigan. All kinds of special protection for this rocky road as you see the hand guards on the handlebars. See Albertine pulling one of the tearaways off of his goggles. They usually build up the goggles with an extra tearaway. And then before the start, all that handling, you want to get that one off there and get clearer vision. Despite five overall wins and 12 motor wins on the season, Jeremy McGrath with only a 40-point lead over Jeff Emig. Making things interesting still as Doug Henry gets all nervous and ready at the starting line. Trying to get himself pumped up. It takes so much motivation to try to get off the line. You sit around in the pits quietly, then you got to go to go to work. Revving up, ready for the gate to drop here at Unadilla. It's a fast start. And Jeff Emig is looking pretty good. Hughes, Lewis, Amaradio, Henry, Ward, all in that front pack. Jeremy McGrath with not a very good start. Kylo Cohen and Bradshaw LaRocco are in front even of Jeremy McGrath on this start. Well, it's looking good right now for Team Kawasaki. Emig coming off that win at Buchanan and Ryan Hughes coming off of back-to-back -back wins here in the 125 class. Jeff Emig is our leader with Hughes number five. That's Lewis shooting by us. There's and McGrath. Jeremy McGrath just going through before the shot change. Yeah, he's pretty far back, got his work cut out. That's what helped Emig win that last race at Buchanan. He got the whole shot. Now he's got his teammate as a buffer for McGrath to have to come through if Ryan doesn't get him first. This has been an interesting comparison all season long, even during the Supercross season. The youngster Ryan Hughes makes the move on the inside on Jeff Emig and takes over the lead here in the 250 Moto number one. Now I talked with Ooh. Ryan. He loves this racetrack. A little sideways there, but that's expected. They water the track. These guys don't know it. They, they got a parade lap, but now they're at full speed. And uh, he did a nice job to hang on. Look, he's already got a little lead now. You can't talk about this track and not talk about the, the rocks that act just like bullets or missiles when they're roosted back into the rider in back. And you see Emmy taking a much different line behind Ryan Hughes in this rough section. Not nearly as good. He's got to keep this one long continuous corner. Couldn't be aggressive. Ryan just ran it wide open all the way to the outside, jumped into that hole, and then cut it back to the inside. He was able to make two straightaways out of that corner instead of one long sweeper. Ryan Hughes, our leader, one of the few riders in the field that doesn't wear a chest protector. That's the best place to be in that instance. <laughs> well, that's why he was so anxious to get ahead of his teammate. Also, before they got to all those watered sections, he got ahead to avoid being sprayed by mud in the first lap. Team No Lean's Kyle Lewis in third place. His best finish, Glenn Helen, a fourth overall. He signed to go to Japan next year. Good money for Kyle. I think he'll do well over there. It I don't think it is in some cases you see guys kind of near the end of their career go over to another country and dominate and I don't think that's the case with Lewis I think it's just a much more lucrative deal and I expect he'll do well 
Number 15, Doug Henry, a new papa. He got a third place overall finish at Southwick, but then got his tooth knocked out in that terrific first lap crash at Buchanan. So he's on the comeback here today, currently in fourth place behind Kyle Lewis. We talk about tough riders. You got to bring up Doug Henry. Remember the crash that uh, just about ended his career. He's riding around out there with titanium in his body and on his motorcycle. Well, I like to make quick work of Kyle Lewis and run with the leaders. I think he's got the speed. Oh, Greg Albertine down just before the gravity cavity. Well, that's a better place to go down than dropping in. That could have been disastrous, but right now uh, he's got Lawrence all over his tail. Our field summary, Ryan Hughes, our leader, Jeff Emig in second, Kyle Lewis in third. We'll be back with more action in a moment. And welcome back to Unadilla Valley Sports Center. Art Ekman, David Bailey, Marty Reed as we take a look at our first moto of the 250s. Ryan Hughes out in front of teammate Jeff Emig, number one and two as we look back in the pack now. Eight is LaRocco, Amaradio number 30, and then Jeremy McGrath, who is in eighth place. He's got a lot of good riders in front of him, but he's got some time on his side as he makes his way into seventh, getting around Amaradio. Good clean pass. He's still got LaRocco to get around, and LaRocco is the man here. He's coming off back-to-back -back wins, 94 and 95. And I don't think he's going to make it easy for Jeremy to get around today. Plus, one of the significant facts is that every time someone other than Jeremy has won, it's been LaRocco who's had a battle with Jeremy during the moto. Let's reach back into history with a Suzuki flashback. Once a year, the 250 Grand Prix season would make it stop at Unadilla, New York. This was 1986 and a battle between Bob Hanna and Johnny O'Mara. Bob on the Suzuki, Johnny on the factory Honda. Went back and forth. Bob checks out Johnny, trying to figure out what line to take. Leaves the door a little bit too far open. Johnny, with an inside line, makes the pass. Cuts all the way over in front of the hurricane. Bob doesn't like that very much. And Johnny started to pull away at this point in the moto. But behind him, Bob was trying everything. Watch this. Hits the berm a little too hard. Makes the spectators back up a step or two. Shakes his head in disgust. And at the end of the race, Johnny running out of gas. The farthest possible place from the pit sits there in disbelief. While Bob Hanna, with a far outside line, has no idea that Johnny is on the sideline. Spectator jumps over the fence to give Hanna the thumbs up. And O'Mara watches Hanna ride by to pick up his first Unadilla GP win. Bob's in as much disbelief as O'Mara. As we get back to the action here in the first moto of the 250s, we see Mike LaRocco battling it out with Jeremy McGrath. And Jeremy McGrath and LaRocco are not battling for the lead. That's the unusual fact right here. I understand O'Mara had a special presentation after that race was over with Bob Hanna, David. Well, he took over an empty gas tank and signed <laughs> it. Gave it to him as a little token. Here you go. Oh, LaRocco getting to the inside of Ward on that off camera before going up the hill. But these powerful 250 machines able to really generate up that hill. Yeah, only if you get a good drive out of the corner. And LaRocco opened the door for McGrath. And he got around Larry Ward as well. And so did Bradshaw. So Ward loses three spots in about 100 yards. Damon Bradshaw, number 28. So it's LaRocco, number eight. Jeremy McGrath and Damon Bradshaw now in seventh place. At this point in the series last year, this was early in Bradshaw's comeback. Had to come from behind at both motos. The second moto, he went down and right in this section with the whole shot, had to come from last again. So today, a little bit better start for him. Jeremy, a great season underway in 14 motos, 12 wins. Last year in 14 motos, he only had six wins. Jeremy McGrath in pursuit of Mike LaRocco. A little different line right here. Nice move. That's that's like the most impossible place on this racetrack to pass somebody. And he just made up a new line, cut to the inside where there wasn't a berm, and still made that pass happen. LaRocco still hanging close, though, to Jeremy McGrath with Doug Henry, his former teammate, right in front of him. I think if you're LaRocco, you try to hang with McGrath. Same with Bradshaw. I mean, if you can just be in contact with, J with Jeremy, you know he's going to the front. He's going to be top three, probably, even with a bad start. For sure, the top five. Oh, LaRocco could really use Doug Henry here. Well, he already did. <laughs> kind of blocked Jeremy a little bit, and LaRocco snuck back in there. That's going to throw Jeremy out of his timing just a little bit. 
Jeremy showing a wheel to the outside, then cutting inside. Marty Reed was able to talk with Mike LaRocco just prior to the start of this moto. Coming off a, a good third place run at Buchanan, and I, I know, I see you to Winston already, but, but it's a step in the right direction, isn't it? Yeah, we, we've been getting a little better as the year goes on, uh, making some changes. Uh, I've been feeling more comfortable, and and I think we're getting closer. Uh, I'm feeling a lot better on the bike, and I'm you know looking forward to the race. And this one. What about Unadilla? Is this your style of track, the way it's laid out now? Yeah, I mean, uh, I like the rough tracks. Uh, it, it tracks a little faster this year, which uh, I don't know if I like that any better, but um, it does get rough, and I think that's going to be uh, more to my advantage. Mike LaRocco holding the edge on Jeremy McGrath in moto number one. Apparently, he went to the outside in that corner just back there and almost left the door wide open for Jeremy. They got together. LaRocco was lucky to hang on to it. Speaking of hanging on, Bradshaw is still in contact with these guys, so he's on the pace today. The tight racing between McGrath and LaRocco. LaRocco in fifth place just in front of Jeremy. Ryan Hughes, our leader, will be back in a moment. Bad credit? No credit. But you need a car. Then come to South Bay Toyota, your credit superstore. Bankruptcy, repossession, late payments, collection, first time buyer, no credit tax lien, charge off, new in town, divorce. No problem is too large. We can finance anyone. Let us help with a pre approved credit certificate. Good for a new or used car up to $10,000. At South Bay Toyota, your credit superstore. Just north of the 405 freeway on Western Avenue in Gardena. We're driven to satisfy you. Thousands of women will lose a child to AIDS simply because they didn't get an HIV test when they were pregnant. You see, there's now treatment that can help stop the spread of HIV from mother to baby, which gives children of HIV-infected mothers something they never had before. A chance. If you're pregnant, please get an HIV test. Imagine a 24-hour network dedicated to bringing you nothing but news about sports. The best highlights, latest information, and instant updates. All right now, as it's happening, what would you call this network? The most amazing, incredible, beautiful, wonderful network ever created by mortal man! Well, not quite. ESPN News Network. The 24-hour sports news network from ESPN. Who else? AMA Motocross is being brought to you by Dunlop. Simply the best for your bike. Art Ekman, David Bailey, Marty Reed back at Unadilla for moto number one of the 250s. Our leader is Ryan Hughes with Jeff Emig, his teammate, right behind him. This battle is for fifth, sixth, and seventh positions. Still quite a ways back in the pack. Uh, for all these guys looking at the pace they're running, boy, you got to be impressed with Kyle Lewis, who's still up there in third place. And if these guys are going this fast, boy, the Kawasaki guys must be really flying. There they are. Hughes, this is his track. He loves this place. He's won here back-to-back -back in the 125, and I think he feels like he owns this race. But Emig isn't going to make it easy for him. Coming out of the gravity cavity. And wheeling around, our leader, Ryan Hughes. Can he hold off his own teammate, Jeff Emig? Emig cutting to the inside. It'll be the clean pass between teammates. That was pretty smart. Ryan was undecided on what he was going to do there. And Emig said, to heck with it. I'm gassing it and just took it away. And then, you know, I got to wonder about Ryan's motivation this year because uh, the jaw injury took him out of the Supercross series, took him out of the National Championship Series for any kind of hopes at a title. And... He's already signed with Kawasaki, so the remainder of the year for him is just kind of like, well, why am I here? So for him, it's a win or nothing. Jeff Emig with a contract in hand, but he has not signed it yet. Emig has one bragging right that Jeremy McGrath doesn't have, and that is he's placed at least second or higher in every moto this year. A little new excitement for us there. He finally got the lead right in front of us. Yeah, he did. It was a really good pass. You know, it looked like he, at the beginning, he was kind of getting his lines down. It looks like he got them down now, and he's starting to pick up the pace. And he's, they're both riding a really good race. I don't know about you, but it was kind of refreshing to see somebody besides Jeremy and Jeff fighting it out. Yeah, for sure. It's nice to see at least a teammate. We got Kawasaki up in front anyway. And more problems for Jeremy McGrath. It was reported in that he went down 
And Jeremy would be back up and cruising in eighth place as we take a look at Mike LaRocco in fourth. And Greg Albertine has passed Henry Bradshaw. And of course, Jeremy McGrath, who went down. Albertine is right behind his teammate LaRocco in fifth place. Closing in on number 11 right there, Kyle Lewis. So what a performance, as you mentioned. He's got third and fourth right in front of him. And the pace in which he caught these guys leads me to believe he's going to get around them. This is his style of racetrack, and it's really starting to show. The question right now is Albertine cuts to the inside of LaRocco. Can he stay upright? LaRocco coming right back, bar to bar between teammates. Almost clipped that lapper as he went by. Got around his teammate, no problem, on the inside. There you get a glimpse of uh, Henry and Bradshaw. They're having their own little battle. Number 16, Greg Albertine, the former world champion, his best finish this year, a fourth place at Mount Morris and a fourth place at Butts Creek. Fonny was getting things together until he ran into two seventh place finishes before coming to Unadilla. But he certainly looks fast right now. He's working his way up the ladder. I mean, he won a moto at Mount Morris. He lost the overall and kind of threw it away. And I've, I've been on his case a little bit saying, you know, he needs to quit crashing. And uh, here's another opportunity today where he could, if he gets around Lewis, he may have himself in a position to win the overall. Albertine looking to pass Lewis. Lewis currently in third place. Albertine just searching behind Lewis for the good line. He's flying. He's putting that bike wherever he wants to put it, taking whatever line he wants. That's a real sign of confidence and strength right now. Emig. Our leader with Hughes in second. Lewis being tested here in third. I can't tell you how much strength it takes to ride the way Albertine's riding right now. Sucking up all that roost. Look at him. He's getting pelted. Look how much air he gets off that jump. He's just going faster everywhere on the racetrack than the guys around him. And almost a whoop de doo looking section before dipping down into that corner. This is that new section. They took out the switchback, let him run wide open. Look at the speed they get all the way over that plateau. Albertine. Edging into third against Lewis. Now can he catch up with Ryan Hughes in second place? Greg Albertine running one of his finest races of the outdoor season. And he just shot through that berm. That's the kind of momentum you need. Then he pre-jumps that uphill. He's doing everything right today. Really impressed with the way he's riding. He jumps over the crest of that hill, pitches the back end out to line him upright. This is more what Roger DeCoster expected when he brought Greg Albertine here from Europe. We'll be back with more action in a moment. Back to Unadilla. First moto of the 250s, you see Jeremy McGrath. An upset in the making here in moto number one. Emig is leading, Hughes in second, and Jeremy's all the way back in seventh. Now testing Doug Henry. Very unusual for Jeremy to be this far behind, this late in the race, to the inside. Great move. Henry left it a little bit too far open, but it uh, looked like Jeremy was going to make that pass no matter what, because he had him all lined up. Does McGrath have enough time to catch the leaders? The leaders have a wonderful lead on Jeremy McGrath. There's Damon Bradshaw now in pursuit of Doug Henry. After knocking that tooth out in uh, Buchanan, Michigan, I was wondering if he'd be back this soon. Marty Reed caught up with him in the pits. The last time we saw the man on my left, Doug Henry, he was doing a very bad impersonation of Goober from Andy of Mayberry. Two teeth knocked out. I know it was very painful, but it looks like from the smile on your face that the doctors were successful in putting him back in. Yeah, it's just real temporary right now. Uh, one tooth is really loose, and uh, the other one's just a, a plastic tooth, so I got to wait about, a, I think, another week before they can do a root canal in there, and uh, I guess they're going to put a crown on one of them, so... Probably in an, uh, another month or so, it should be just all back to normal. Uh, you still got any pain from this crash? No, not, not in my mouth. My shoulder's a little sore. I haven't really been able to do much riding, but I've been able to do a little bit of running and uh, a lot of road bicycling. So it's, uh, I've been staying in shape, so hopefully here, you know. It, it doesn't feel too bad, so I just hope that my arms don't pump up, because then I'll be doing good. Arms don't seem to be pumping up, but Bradshaw Seems to have the edge as he cuts inside on that corner, and Bradshaw now has moved in front of Doug Henry. It's kind of a gutsy move, too, because he went in there hard, and both wheels were washing out a little bit on him, and he just gassed it and made it happen. He's been behind Henry 
most of the time, maybe now that he's gotten around him, he can hook up with McGrath and go to the front. Bradshaw also could gain some confidence uh, trailing McGrath in this manner as far as the second moto is concerned. Bradshaw's best finish is second place at Southwick this year. One is beginning to wonder about his contractual situation for next season. Time now for our Honda Riding Tip. Preparing your body for motocross is just as important as properly preparing your machine for motocross. You need to start preparing your body at least a week in advance uh, by drinking plenty of fluids, eating the proper foods, foods that are low in sugars and fats, high in proteins, carbohydrates, minerals. And on race day, you want to replenish your body with plenty of those foods and drinks. You want to start drinking at least a gallon of water a day prior to your event and definitely the day before. If you wait till race day to start drinking fluids, uh, it's probably going to be too late. For the Honda, 1-800 Collect Fox Racing Team, this is Mike Osler. Steve Lampson's mechanic giving us our Honda riding tip today as we take a look at our leader, Jeff Emig. Looks pretty good, hopping into that corner. I mean, it would have been easy for Emig to uh, hang with his teammate, Hughes, who's fast here at Unadilla, but I think he feels the urgency of putting points on Jeremy and uh, trying to get as many riders between himself and Jeremy as he can. And this is a great opportunity with Jeremy having gone down earlier. That shot emphasizing the great charge after going down early by Greg Albertine, who is now catching up with Ryan Hughes, number five. Albertine, number 16, to the inside. Hughes giving him lots of room, comes back with the throttle. But can Albertine, on that inside turn, take the advantage permanently? Goes wide. Oh, Hughes hanging right with him. Talk about two fighters, boy. These are the guys right here. Albertine is so fast. And I think the difference, I mean, he's faster than Jeremy a lot of times, but I think the difference between he and Jeremy is, is uh, McGrath's learned how to win. And there's times where Jeremy's actually the slowest through sections, places where he knows he can cruise and still pick up the win. I think uh, Albertine is so anxious. He's trying so hard everywhere that uh, he pushes too hard in places sometimes where he doesn't need to. And once he gets that worked out, he'll be winning some races. Emig with an eight-second lead over Albertine as we look back to Jeremy McGrath who got a poor start, then also went down, was as far back as eighth place on his second attempt to rush up through the pack. Saw him on that climb up the hill, choose a rut, pre-jump the hill, reach up, pull a tear off. I mean, <laughs> talk about being relaxed, this guy <laughs> is. Jeff Emming, our leader, with a new man in second place, Greg Albertine. Back for the finishing moments of photo number one for the 250s, Jeremy McGrath is currently in fourth place. Not riding as smoothly as you're used to seeing Jeremy McGrath cut through these outdoor courses. McGrath, whoa, the lapper tried to make it easier and McGrath almost ran into him. And it actually made it harder. McGrath had to change his line going into that drop off and you don't want to start in there sideways and swap down into the bottom. That's big problems. And Unadilla, I think art for Jeremy is kind of becoming like the Daytona. You know, a race that he just can't seem to get get it done. And if he can only get a fourth place in his first moto, overall, it doesn't look good. His worst moto finish of the season was a fifth at Mount Morris. That was the opening moto of that event. Came back to win the second moto in a third place overall, which is his worst overall of the year. But that's been some time ago. Jeremy now trying in the last few laps to get back into this race, get back into contention at least for a top three spot. If he makes any mistake at all, he's got Lewis, who's riding great today, and LaRocco, who just won't leave him alone. Look, they're right there, pushing him to the finish. LaRocco really becoming more of a rival with uh, Jeremy McGrath than Jeff Emig is, even though Emig has been known as the streak breaker. Emig just having uh, much better starts than LaRocco. I think if they were to swap, Morocco would be winning the majority of these races because the guy is fast. You can see right here, he's matching McGrath, although Jeremy went down. Morocco's still got the speed. Here's our leader, Jeff Emig, number two. He's put in a great ride. He earned it, too, having to get around his teammate and built a pretty nice lead. That's going to give him a lot of confidence going into the second moto. The checkers are in sight for Jeff Emig. This would be two moto wins in a row. Starting with consistency as the number one placement. Oh, he's got to feel great. Jeff Emig, Greg Albertine, and Ryan Hughes, the top three. 
All in front of Jeremy McGrath, we had a fast moto number one for those 250 machines. Marty Reed is with our winner. Well, I don't know if you knew how exciting this race was for all of us behind you, but uh, it, I'll tell you what, Ryan Hughes gave you a bit of a paddle there in the beginning. Yeah, he, um, you know, he definitely passed me where I wasn't expecting, but, uh, you know, but Ryan's always real fast here, and uh, you know, I know that he really wants to win at this place. As far as second moto now, you are in complete control. Will this change your strategy? No, you know, I'm just looking for a whole shot and looking to ride like I did the first moto. You know, I knew that Greg was back there and I was just trying to pick my way through the lappers, uh, you know, and uh, stay out of the roost because I didn't want to catch no rocks, you know, by a lapper and, you know, and possibly, you know, like injure something. Maybe the fastest bike on the track after going down was number 16, Greg Albertine. A phenomenal comeback for second place. Marty's with him now. Well, you told me before this race started this was your type of track, and I know it's could have, should have, would have, but if you don't go down, you would have been battling for the win. Yeah, you know, the first lap, I was just going really smooth, actually, and easy, and I came into the one turn, and there was a rut I wasn't expecting, and front wheel just washed out, but very good race. I felt really good and strong right to the end. Had some great lines, and, uh, you know, I just want to thank everybody for the support out there. I'm a guest in this country, and I made a lot of friends, and I appreciate the prayers and support. Well, I'll tell you, it sets up a great showdown coming up for the second moto because uh, you've got to have some confidence coming in. Yeah, you know, I said I was feeling good in practice, and, uh, you know, I'm really feeling good for the second. It's still strong, got a lot of energy, so I'm ready for a good race. Can Albertine continue? Can Jeremy come back? We'll have Moto2 when we return. AMA Motocross is being brought to you by Suzuki. Right now, your Suzuki dealer has the ride you've been waiting for and the financing to get it. Crew's going to work on, it looks like, LaRocco's bike. Anytime they pull off that tail section, they're usually working on the rear shock, trying to get him dialed in for the second moto. Welcome back to an uncharacteristically smooth and fast Unadilla track. And David, we've got great weather. It's nice. There's no humidity like usual, and there's no rain like usual. I can remember it raining always or threatening to rain. And the amateurs are the lucky ones. They get to get to this racetrack while it's still fresh, still has grass on it. Because of the lack of moisture they've had, uh, the track's much drier, a lot more powdery, and it's brought up some rocks. Jeff Emig, his second straight moto victory, and for the second straight moto, Jeremy McGrath having to fight through riders. Well, I think Emig's starts have been phenomenal in forcing Jeremy to have to come from behind a lot. And Emig has got two motos in a row going back to last week, if you want to count that one. So maybe now he's got the confidence and the strength to hold Jeremy off all the time. And a good ride for Albertine, charging back from a uh, pretty bad start up to second. Reaching back into the record books, uh, when was the last time someone other than Emig and uh, McGrath won an overall? Well, it was back in 1995, Millville, Mike Kudrowski. Ironically, Kudrowski announced he's coming back to racing, signing with Honda of Troy for next year. That's exciting to hear. I think Mike has sat on the other side of the fence just long enough and thinks he can still go out there and beat those guys and probably has a renewed enthusiasm and appreciation for the sport. And he talked earlier with Marty Reed. Big news this week. What uh, brought this decision about? Um, well, there was a bunch of reasons. Uh, you know, I've, I've been talking to the fans stuff. I've been coming to the races with Kawasaki as a consultant. And, uh, you know, they always ask me, hey, are you going to race again? I tell them, no, you know, I'm done. But, uh, yeah, I kind of still had the itch to go race and stuff. And uh, I had an eight-month break and stuff, and I haven't been riding, training or nothing. And Honda Troy, Troy gave me a call, Phil did, and uh, he said, hey, you want to ride for us? And, yeah, I thought it was great that somebody called and asked me to come ride for them. So, uh, you know, I said, yeah, I'll do it. And uh, we got the contract. Well, I haven't signed the real contract yet. I did a letter of intent. And um, next year in 97, I'll be on a Honda Troy bike riding the 250 Supercross and 250 Nationals. Mike had been the advisor for Kawasaki for, uh, what, about the last six months, I guess. And I think that uh, going to the races all the time, I think he missed it. And he kind of watched our team for uh, the last six months. And he was close to doing a deal with us last fall, and he kind of backed out at the last minute to stay with Kawasaki. And I think that just from being at the races and uh, watching everybody ride, he just got the itch. And uh, Eric Kehoe and him talked. Um, oh, shoot, I guess they've been talking for about the last six weeks. And uh, last Saturday, uh, the 13th, we managed to uh, get him to sign a contract for next year. Realistically, where do you place yourself next year? Um, well, my, my ultimate goal is to go out and win. Um, you know, there's one guy everybody's charging after right now, and, um, you know, he's doing a great job winning. And, you know, 
always when I had the number one plate, I knew there was somebody that wanted to beat me to take it away. Well, that's what I want to do to Jeremy is get that number one plate. Mike Kudrowski, of course, the rider. It's won a 125, a 250, and a 500 outdoor championship, but never a Supercross championship. That'll be an interesting challenge starting the year out next year in Supercross. He'll be ready. He's still in great shape. He's, he's uh, looked at this from the other side of the fence, and he knows that uh, he believes he still has the ability to win. And nowadays, you know, the Honda of Troy, the, the Pro Circuit bikes, those guys are competitive. They get good suspension. They won't have quite the advantage Jeremy would, but desire can make up for a lot. A determined look in the eyes of Jeremy McGrath after that fourth place finish in the opening moto. He still does have an outside chance for the overall should anyone else mess up and he be right at the right place at the right time. The gate is down and Emig another great start for Jeff Emig. Behind him Lewis Ward and Hughes. What a tight group on that first turn as Emig is in the lead. There's Lewis number 11, Hughes number 5, Larry Ward number 6, and then Jeremy McGrath. A lot of banging going on right there. Lewis, another great start. Larry Ward up in there. Albertine, who rode so strong in that first moto, is about ninth or 10th right now. Stringing out a bit now into the single file, the leaders, Jeff Emig. Boy, it's got to be another great feeling for Emig now. Huge opportunity for him. We could be looking at uh, what happened at Red Butt last week all over again. A good start. A whole shot. Can't get any better than that. And Emig, or uh, rather McGrath, still kind of buried back in the pack. Larry Ward putting the heat to Kyle Lewis, who's in second place behind Jeff Emig. And Jeremy McGrath has moved into fourth in front of Ryan Hughes. So Emig now with the advantage. There's Lewis number, oh my goodness, Emig goes down, Lewis goes flying over Emig's bike. We've got a new leader, Jeff Emig going down, a very bad break, it looked like it was a little slick where they watered the track. Emig taking Lewis down, Jeff back up and running though at about what, 11th or 10th? I think maybe even further back than that, Art, what a disaster for Jeff Emig, here's going to be another look. He got sideways where they'd watered the track. No parade lap this time. Caught him by surprise. The bike swapped back the opposite way. Lewis hammered into the bike. Larry Ward is our new leader with Jeremy McGrath in second place. Number five, Ryan Hughes right on Jeremy's tail. Hughes beating McGrath in the first moto by one placement. A third place for Ryan. Look at how steep that downhill is. I tell you, Art, the first time I ever saw this hill, I thought it was a joke. I didn't see how he could get stopped for that corner. Then you make the left and it's a hill climb. I mean, in some case, if you don't get out of the corner just right, you get a downshift going up that hill. That's how steep it is. Boy, with the ruts like that, it almost looked like a trials mountain. Well, it, it just about is. It's the steepest downhill and uphill on any racetrack that I can think of, here or overseas. And it, that's what makes Unadilla so spectacular. Our leader is Larry Ward. I believe it's the first time he's led in the outdoors season after a slow start on the year. Ward in first, McGrath, Hughes, Bradshaw, and Albertine. We'll be back in a moment. Art Ekman and David Bailey along with Marty Reed down in the mechanics area for motor number two of our 250 race, and it has been an outstanding battle. You know an interesting fact right now, David? Jeremy McGrath has not been in the lead one lap all afternoon. Well, that's not only interesting, Art, but it's pretty amazing, really. And the guy has won in just about every stop uh, on the circuit, both indoor and outdoor, except this place. And it's still, he's got to have to earn it. And even if he wins this moto, it doesn't look like the overall is going to go his own. Oh, Bradshaw! Bradshaw got caught in that very difficult area. It looked like he might have been clipped by a rider coming by. That's a tough section. You're constantly making that right-hand corner, and once you leave the ground, that big hole there, uh, the back end swaps out, you land in it, and it wants to bounce back the other way, and it caught Bradshaw by surprise. Oh, this has been a dangerous area during practice as well, David. That's just a tough section. Hannah went down there once uh, in a race that I can remember, went down hard and was dizzy when he got up. Damon looks okay, but look at the energy that it takes to... Uh, go through the races, come out here, put in the performance that he was, charging hard, crash like that, and then he can't get the bike started. Now the whole rest of the moto pretty much is going to be a bummer for him. So Damon Bradshaw, after a spectacular crash, trying to get back into the race, out in front, 
Larry Ward is our leader. Jeremy McGrath, though, is in second place. Now, got to be an exhausted Damon Bradshaw. Another look. He landed in that hole a little bit sideways. The front end got turned. Just got, kind got, of a weird deal there. How he was lucky not to get run over by Albertine. A new development while we were gone. Ryan Hughes has made a pass on Jeremy McGrath. So it is Ryan Hughes in pursuit of Larry Ward, our leader. Pretty amazing. Jeremy is just not getting it all together here today. But uh, I think it's also a real testament to how good Hughes is riding today as well. He's going fast. He likes this place. And if there's anywhere that uh, you could ask Ryan Hughes where he would beat Jeremy for sure, he'd probably pick Unadilla as one of those spots. And look at all the rocks starting to come up through there. Here's the move by Jeremy McGrath, an almost impossible move. If you look at the terrain that he had to go over, the off-camber turn, and Jeremy McGrath and Ryan Hughes continue to battle it out for second place. This battle between themselves, I think, is really going to pick up the pace. They're pushing each other, and Larry Ward is still out front. So Larry, obviously riding a very fast pace, kind of got a little gift there in the first lap when everybody went down, but... He was in the right place at the right time, and he's still hanging on to a pretty comfortable lead. Larry Ward coming off his best performance of the year in Buchanan. After a 6-4, he placed fourth overall and is looking very good here out in front of Jeremy McGrath and Ryan Hughes. David, where the track in the first moto looked very, very fast, it is now starting to run up. And that's what Ryan Hughes likes. This is where he does well when the situation gets tough. If he can pass Jeremy back right here, he'd really make a statement. Time now for another Suzuki flashback. This was the 1988 250 Grand Prix at Unadilla. Rick Johnson broke out the zebra pants. Check him out. He was out to the early lead and led all day long. The only battle was back in the pack for second place. Bob Hanna, number 26 on the Suzuki, battling with Mickey Diamond. He went back and forth, but eventually it was Hannah, the crowd favorite, taking over second place. In his final ride of his career, Mickey Diamond held on for third place, while Rick Johnson took the overall win. Second went to Hannah in the final ride of his career, and he said in a post-race interview, I won. Says in the rule book, you have to be human to race motocross, and Rick Johnson is not human. Jeremy McGrath trying to catch up with Larry Ward, and he's chipped away on Ward's lead. At least now he's in Ward's side mirrors, and Ward, uh, he's been there before. At, in fact, at Buchanan, Larry Ward held him off for a little while, and uh, it seems inevitable, I guess, just because Jeremy's got the record that he does, that he would get around Larry, but Larry's not going to make it easy. He's riding good here today. Look at this. Number 16, Greg Albertine has now moved into third place in front of Ryan Hughes. And the, he's not that far away from the leaders. Now he's got him in his sights. And he was, in fact, the fastest guy on the racetrack in the first moto. So this is shaping up to be a good race. Whoa, Ward, McGrath, and Albertine with the overall up for grabs. We'll be right back. It's Una Dillon. We've got a classic battle going on here for the lead in moto two the 250s larry ward the independent team honda against the factory honda oh, larry wide open wide. real easy pass for jeremy mcgrath to move into first place larry ward trying to hang with him now larry looked back over his shoulder too as jeremy was going by on the inside which may be an indication that uh, he's getting a little bit tired having run this fast pace to stay in lead all this time and hoping nobody else is coming. Second would be pretty good for him in this moto. Larry Ward with a 14th in the first moto. And Jeremy McGrath is trying to really burn it out now. This is where Jeremy is so strong. When he does get into that lead, he puts an exclamation point on it right away and just really detunes the guy behind him. He's, he pulls away so quick, he just lets everybody think, well, there's no way I can hang with that. I'll just ride for second. McGrath just refuses to get down for too long, any time during this season. Of course, after the fourth in the first photo, here he is back out in the lead. McGrath just phenomenal. Albertine coming up, though, with good speed. Let's go to Marty. Well, by my count right now, with Jeremy in front, your guy's got to pick up one more spot. He's in third. He's got to get the second for the overall. Yeah, you're 100% right. If he gets Ward, we got it in the bag. And to me, that's all that counts. So you're real confident right now, aren't you? I am. 
And Ian, he always has that positive attitude, sticking by Greg Albertine no matter what, but Greg is starting to come through. Greg has history to make here today. He does, and I tell you what, if I was a mechanic, I'd be smiling and confident too, because the guy is like twice as fast as everybody else in the first motor, just rode right through everyone. McGrath made it a little easier. Wow, look at Blank. Morocco. Nice bump in on Ryan Hughes. It's usually the other way around, but Ryan's getting pushed around a little bit today. I don't think he's liking it too much, but well, LaRocco starting to show some of that form that earned him a couple overall wins here at Unadilla. Moving into fourth place, Mike LaRocco. He's putting in a nice charge, and you can see the rocks, all those ruts starting to develop. The track is really the toughest right now. It's been all day long, and Ryan Hughes starting to fade a little. Doesn't look quite as good as he did on the 125 here. With his sleeves rolled up, he's, he's working hard. Greg Albertine now attacking Larry Ward. Forced to follow him up that hill, but he made a run at him on the inside. Given the blue flag with that stripe here, that means for the lappers, the leaders are coming around, so get out of the way. I think it's interesting that these three riders are pretty close to one another. Jeremy McGrath is our leader with Larry Ward and Greg Albertine battling it out amongst the lappers. Larry Ward putting in a fine ride here today. This is the best I've seen him look in a long time, maybe all year in the outdoors. Albertine made a run at him there on the inside, but Larry Ward had a good drive up the hill and opens up a little lead again. Ward number six, Honda of Troy. He is re-signed for next year. That'll be a good team with Kudrowski back in there. His work ethic, I think, uh, could really benefit for some of the other riders, perhaps Mike Craig, if they sign him again, and Larry Ward. That's going to make them uh, try just a little bit harder, try to be the number one guy on that team. Well, oh, Ward fishtailing quite a bit. Is that Albertine out in front? Yes, Albertine has moved into second place. If he can hold this position, he would win the overall. And the last Suzuki rider to win an overall was Kent Howerton. That was some 15 years ago, David. Marty Reeds with Skip Norfolk. Well, he's got the lead, looking a lot better than the first moto, but you still don't control your own destiny as long as Albertine's closing. No, he's probably the guy in the, in the hot seat right now. He's going to be the one in the hunt for the overall. We just got to win the race, and whatever happens behind him happens behind him. Made some changes uh, to the bike mentally, and um, it seems to be working right now. I think the bike could be a little better than it is, but we're going to have to go home and do some homework. But uh, he's seeming to uh, make things work right now. Any changes you want to share with us? Well, we made some tire changes, uh, some carburetion changes, and some suspension changes. So, uh, yeah, we did a lot of work in between the motos. And that work has certainly paid off as Jeremy McGrath looks like a different rider here in Moto2. Well, motocross is unlike a lot of other sports. When you get out there for that half-hour moto plus two laps, if something's wrong, you got to live with it. You know, it's not like you get a timeout. You get to talk it over, talk about things, change your lines, and uh, make changes. So, obviously, during the mo between motos, they made the right changes because he's back out front. And usually, these problems don't get better as the race goes on. No. They have it a tendency it, to get worse. Makes it harder. Makes you work harder. You spend more energy. And right now, Albertine, he's got to play it smart. He's in an overall position. I know he wants to beat Jeremy so bad, but uh, he, he can't take any unnecessary chances. He's got his work his way up that ladder. He got a moto win at Mount Morris. He needs an overall. Then he can try and beat Jeremy. And anything can happen on this rocky track. We'll be back with the race to the checkers in a moment. Bay Motocross is being brought to you by the reigning Supercross 125 and 250 Outdoor Champions. Honda, come ride with us. Late moments of moto number two, Jeremy McGrath is our leader. After a fourth place finish in the first moto, Greg Albertine, though, the big news is that he has a chance to win for Suzuki their first overall in about 15 years. It was back in 1981, the last time Suzuki won an overall national championship. And he is starting to close the gap on Jeremy, but I don't think enough where it's worth going after him. Just stay back there, keep the pressure on, maybe force Jeremy into a mistake. But trying to go for it all here might be a little bit too much. Well, if he went down, Larry Ward wouldn't be that far away. Yeah, he, he had a chance to win the overall at Mount Morris, I think, and went down late in the race. And I, I hope he's learned from that. So another great moto win on the way for Jeremy McGrath as the fans are encouraging all the riders on as they do in motocross. 
but he's going to have to share some glory with the overall winner, Greg Albertine. Albertine with a second place finish in moto number one is currently in second place in this final moto of the day. It looks to me like in this last lap, Jeremy's going as fast as he was anywhere during the moto. He knows he's got to. Albertine is uh, very unpredictable back there. He's close enough to make a pass. Well, this has been a very hard-earned victory for Jeremy McGrath as well. Well, typically in the later stages of the race, you know, the leader will let up a little bit, and he just can't do that right now. And Albertine, no, he's not close enough to make that pass. However, if Jeremy was to let up, uh, he would be, and Jeremy knows that, and he's got to push it all the way to the end. Boy, that, that memory of that downhill, it's almost like a staircase right now, is scary. A little swap there by Jeremy, too, coming over the rise of that hill. The back end got away from him a little bit. Jeremy McGrath now can see the checkers in sight for his 13th moto win in 16 motos this year. Here comes Greg Albertine on a slow trot, about oh, two or three seconds behind him. What a great feeling this has got to be for the Suzuki camp and Greg Albertine. His very first overall in the national circuit here in America. Coming up and congratulated by James Dobb, an Englishman. Jeremy McGrath, though, winning moto number two. Albertine, Ward, and LaRocco and Hughes with very strong, strong showings here in the second moto. Let's go down to Marty with our winner. Well, I know you weren't happy after the first moto, but what a way to come back. Yeah, you know, it's uh, unfortunate in the first moto, you know, Greg fell down, he rode good, and I fell down, and, you know, I, I caught up as much as I could, but fourth was the best I could do, and uh, had to go back and regroup, kind of concentrate, and get my act together, and uh, it worked. <laughs> you, you know, we were talking with, uh, with Greg about the fact that it's the first time in a long time somebody other named Emig and McGrath has won one of these things, but, and, and this is the first two-race losing streak that you've had in, gosh, what, two, three years. And so, you know, does this make Troy even that more important? Well, you know, I, after these uh, breaks we've been having, you know, it's, it's time to get my, you know, my training back down and getting back in routine. And, you know, uh, I'm happy for Greg. He really rode a good race. And, and uh, finally, you know, it's not Emig or me. You know, it's someone else. <laughs> Greg Albertine, the overall winner with a 2-2. Jeremy McGrath, a 4-1, and Emig, the 1-8. Roger DeCoster has to be very proud of this young man. Hey, 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 congratulations. First win overall. How's it feel? Feels awesome. I just want to give all glory to God. You know, to give me the talent to race with these great riders, you know, I have so many people to thank. Roger, my mechanic, Ian, David, uh, Gary Bailey for helping me out with my technique, and uh, peak performance, Joe, my trainer. Everything's just coming together, and I'm so pumped. Now, do you realize, uh, we're trying to figure out the last time somebody other than Emig or McGrath won one of these things, and I, I, quite frankly, it's quite a while. Yeah, it sure is, you know, and I wanted to be the one to do it, and, you know, I was pushing for McGrath in that last moto, but... I thought I've got the overall, let me just uh, lose my reputation of being a crasher, and uh, I just hung in there, slowed down, and finished the race. Congratulations, great win. Thanks, man. Well, Jeremy might not have won the overall, but he continues to increase his points lead on Emig to 45 points. No position changes in the top five this week. A couple things that come to mind today, Art, is Emig. As the dog days of summer are upon us, the motocross elite take one last look back before the stretch run for championship glory. Look out, he's out of order. Tez Velasco spinning in the air. Can't really tell what happened. Looks like he just got... Samson is taken away with it. John Dowd, though, makes the inside move on. Oh, they contact, and Michael Craig kisses the third over. Down like that. Coming around, he told his mechanic something. The checkered flag for Steve Lampson. 